Please welcome your host this evening, Simon Hall! Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Now, I've got good news and I've got bad news for you tonight. I know, that's the way life goes. The good news is, we've got a great evening, fascinating insights into writing life and the answers to some questions you've always wanted to know, probably quite a few you've never wanted to know. The bad news, however, is how is it traditional for chat show, in conversation, evenings to start? What is your host's duty? Traditionally, at the start of a night like this, what am I going to do? Get drunk. <laughs> I've got to tell you a couple of jokes to start. <laughs> you know, I knew that would be the reaction somehow. Is that one? However, however, give me a break here, please, if you don't mind, just, just a break, because I've had quite a bad year. Quite a bad year writing. Yeah. It's been a tough year writing. Aww. Things just haven't been working out. Aww. I tried a book on undersea warfare, but I couldn't get the subplot. It's really going to get worse. <laughs> so then I switched to a book on corkscrews, but I couldn't come up with a twist. <laughs> It's going badly, so I thought, I'll go with a home banker, I'll go with a book on punctuation. I can't go wrong with a book on punctuation. But, you know, I lost most of the stomach with it, and I was just left with a semicolon. <laughs> As for the part about italics, I couldn't get an angle. <laughs> And the chat for about full stops, I just couldn't see the point. <laughs> I think I need a beer after that. Who <laughs> knows how you're feeling? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in a first for Swanick and quite possibly a last of this record, <laughs> a first in my career as an author and broadcaster and quite possibly a last of this record, and a first for our panel, and hopefully not a last, let's welcome our panel tonight. Ladies and gentlemen. questions for me tonight, to do my work for me. We'll get to one of those in just a sec, but I guess most of you will know our panel tonight, but just in case you don't, our Swanick stalwarts here, I've asked them to write one line, just one line each about themselves to introduce themselves to you. Mr. Steve Harvey says, he recently retired as a children's author to spend more time script writing with his family, walking his whippet. <laughs> he assures me that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not tonight, it's not. And cultivating his persona as a Mancunian man of mystery. <laughs> as for Sue, she writes contemporary novels designed to entertain, but also give readers food for thought and sell in huge numbers. <laughs> John writes dark, gothic adventures for children, and is... <laughs> that wasn't the fun part. <laughs> John writes dark, gothic adventures for children, and is scared that one day he'll frighten himself to death. <laughs> so thank you for your questions, thank you for playing along. It saves me an awful lot of work, I must say. Um, so we'll start with one of your questions. And it is this, where were you and what did you do when you very first heard you were going to be published? Steve. Uh, I remember it well. I know I do, but I do, I do. Um, I was in, a, in my car, in a car park in Bury in Lancashire. Not the most um, auspicious sort of place to find out that you, you, your life is about to change, but there it was. 
uh, that's where I was. Um, uh, I, I used to have a proper job, um, and I was doing my proper job, and the phone rang, and there was my agent. I should say this up actually, because I'd, the previous two uh, calls I'd had from my agent, she said, no, it's gone out, Steve, and we've just had five or six rejections, and nobody seems interested, so I wasn't expecting it. She called me up, she said, uh, Macmillan and Chicken House have both, both put offers in. <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't driving, I, I was in the station. Uh, but, like I said, I had a proper job, and um, I had an appointment with, uh, with someone, that, that, which, of course, yeah, I instantly didn't want to do. <laughs> so I, I phoned up the, uh, the gentleman I was supposed to be going to see, for my proper job, and I went, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I really, really can't do it. I'm, I'm really feeling ill. But when I went home, I went, Yeah! <laughs> it was brilliant. So you're mildly pleased? Mildly pleased. Mildly pleased. All right. And Sue, what about you? Well, I'd really recommend it to anybody um, getting a, your first publishing contract. I was having a really, really horrible day because my computer wasn't working, and then one of my sons confessed that his college work was on it, and if he didn't hand it in the next day, he'd be suspended. So no pressure there then, it's about half past four, I went to my husband's office to use his phone to try and get the name of this file so the computer company could get it off the hard drive and onto a, I think it was a floppy disk in those days actually, 2003 it would have been. And um, then I rang one of my sons and he was telling me all this all this stuff and he said, oh and, and your, or your agent rang. So I forgot about the computer. <laughs> I said, what did she want? She says, will you, he said, she says, will you ring her straight back, please? So I rang the computer company first and said, the phone's got blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then rang Laura and said, you know, I've had a message to ring you back. And she said what I'd been waiting to hear for so long, I have an offer for you. Oh. And apparently my side of the conversation just went, I'm joking, you're joking. In different tones of voice, you're joking. <laughs> joking. So, and that's and I actually did ring her back the next morning to say, did you mean it? <laughs> it was some kind of cruel joke. Um, so it was towards the end of the day and I said to my husband, right, you need to take me out for dinner because novelists don't cook. <laughs> He took me out to his golf club and um, we drank some fizz. I drank most of it because he was driving, obviously. And I got back and my son said, Oh, a lady called Marina Ram, she's your new editor and she rang to congratulate you. And that day was right up there with the days my children were born. Thank you, Sue. What about you, Jim? Well, um, yeah, I, I was uh, polishing my budgery gar collection. <laughs> the phone rang, I was at home, and um, yeah, it, it was a strange thing really, because Mortlock, which was my first book, was, was out to a number of publishers, and, and, and slowly they were making all kinds of strange demands, so we want you to write, turn this into 16 books to be written over 12 months, and my agent was saying, you can't possibly do that, he's got a great job, and um, yeah, so I was, I was kind of losing heart really, because I was thinking, I could see publishers dropping out, you know, one by one, and Bloomsbury, who... Uh, became my book today. They, uh, they basically said to my editor, um, yeah, we're interested, just let us know if you get a firm offer. And, um, and my, my editor, I've still got the email at home, I've kind of saved it, because uh, it, it says on it, my editor says, oh, uh, Bloomsbury have said just to let them know, to be honest, I don't think they're, they're, I don't think they're serious about it. At all, you know? And um, anyway, so I think it was Edmont that eventually uh, put an offer in and the phone call came and my, my agent said, uh, well, it was a bit strange really because I, uh, I just phoned Bloomsbury as a, as a courtesy and, uh, and said, Edmont are interested. And the editor just said, well, whatever they're offering, we'll offer more. Did you agent lie? Yeah, sadly, no. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah, I, I was... Uh, suitably uh, stunned and, and wasn't quite sure, you know, didn't know whether to believe it or not, and uh, 
And then, yeah, I think I probably just went and made a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit understated <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> aren't I? It's like, How yeah, terribly British are you? Hi, mate, I'm just, my life's just changed. Shall we have tea? It happens like that in our house sometimes. It's like, oh, I've got a new book deal. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, put that on. This one says how much. Oh, right. <laughs> There's no congratulations, it's how much. It's how much, yeah. yes. Okay, a wonderful moments from a writing career. Um, a lovely start to the evening. And uh, let me change gear slightly because something I've decided to do tonight is ask a few questions that don't usually get asked. <laughs> Quite. Um, <laughs> But I'd like your help with this. I've called these questions the Dirty Dozen. And they're all from my rather diseased imagination. <laughs> so I have in front of me these 12 questions that I have invented. So ladies and gentlemen, stick up a hand. What number from 1 to 12 would you like? Six. Six, okay. Six it is. And who would you like it asked of first? Sue. Sue? Sue? Okay. Sue, this is for you. <laughs> Have you been upsetting people in your house? <laughs> Alright, Sue. So, have you ever used, or do you ever use, bits of your family and friends for evil characters? <laughs> oh. 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 Well, there's, there's kind of a two-part answer to this. A little bit, I use my mum. That I, When I wrote uh, Love and Freedom, it, there are several mums in it. and um, So I dedicated the book to my mum. And the dedication reads, thanks for not being any of the mums in this book. <laughs> she was perfectly happy. And my brothers individually rang me up and said, she is so glorious. <laughs> <laughs> and also, any men in my books who have B.O., Dandra, halitosis, they're called Phil. Because... <laughs> any Phil's in here tonight? <laughs> He broke my heart when I was 17 and I have not oh. yet forgiven him. Oh. <laughs> what a great way of having revenge. What about you, Josh? Yeah, I, um, well, people that have been on my course actually know this, but so apologies, you can have a little snooze now. But, um, yeah, in, in, uh, I'm the youngest of, of, uh, of four children and my eldest brother is much older than me. He's got 14, 15 years older than me. And so, as I grew up, uh, he was almost like a, a distant uncle that used to come back and he was a teacher as well, he was a headmaster, so when I was a teenager he just used to come back and sort of grill me about the Russian Revolution, <laughs> the Weimar Republic or whatever, you know. and, um, and, and so like, we weren't close, I'll put it that way, and, um, and, and, the, and uh, the other thing he used to do as well, when I was very young, is, is tell me like really sort of spooky stories and lock me in the toilet and all those things that big things do. And so I thought, well, the best thing I can do really to get back and it was a bit of therapy is I killed him in one of the books. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let that go. How did you kill him? He, he was actually he the, uh, he was on a boat that was uh, sinking and he slid back into the mouth of. Uh, a huge kind of, yeah, it was a bit like a quint in Jaws. Yeah. And, and, and how did that feel that moment? It got, it, oh, quite, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 unfortunately, I, in a drunken moment, I told one of my other brothers. That's what I did. It up. And, uh, of course, he's another older brother, so he took great delight in telling this oh, older brother. No. That, uh, so he, he was quite shocked. I did point out he died a hero's death. So. <laughs> I'm sure that was a huge consolation. <laughs> I think so. I think we patched it up. But what about you, Steve? No, funnily enough, not friends and family have actually remained, you know, sort of alive. <laughs> there are friends and family in my books, but I've, I've not done anything nasty to them. I actually, um, there is somebody in, in one of my Danny Baker record break books who is somebody I really abhor. Frankly, this, this, this woman is, is a git, frankly. <laughs> I'll not miss words, she's not a nice person. And she was really horrible to my darling daughter, so I had to, you know, exact revenge. So, she's in one of my books, um, she's described as having a face like a frog by one of my heroes, Danny. And at one point they make a, a, a snowman of her, and turn her head round and show a carrot somewhere where perhaps a carrot should be shown. <laughs> Somebody once, somebody once gave me um, some advice, which I did follow in this case. He said, if, if you want to really get back at someone, 
that you really, really don't like and you want to put them in your story, don't make them an important character. Don't give them that satisfaction of being important. Make them, some, make them a minor character. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good advice, Susan. You heard of the phrase, add insult to injury? Quite. All right. Um, so I've got one from you, which has been submitted by our, our writers here tonight. Um, if you weren't an author, what career would you have had pursued? Well, I've always had a hankering to be a pilot. Um, and the research for my book that's out now did involve me getting a helicopter pilot to take me up and pretend to crash, and it was awesome. Oh. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. Um, that was fantastic. You know, like a sycamore seed comes down. Did that with a helicopter. So um, you do need to get the rotors spinning, not the helicopter. That's the, that's the trick. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I would have liked to have been a pilot, but I don't think my maths is up to it, because apparently just getting a co-pilot to do it for you is not, is not the thing. Um, I, I did work in a bank, and I did quite enjoy that. People keep saying, oh, it's really boring, but actually I was on the lending team, and we found out all the ins and outs of everything, and it was brilliant. So there's only four banks in the town, so a quarter of the adult population might <laughs> have access to their records. It was really interesting. So. No, I think I'll just stick with pilot then, but someone else to do the maths. I can see you as a pilot. Yeah, thank you. What about you, Steve? Um, I, I, I've got a degree in microbiology. I was actually a microbiologist. Yeah. yeah. What way <laughs> is it? <laughs> Always what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a biologist sometimes. But, and then I started working in my. Uh, any microbiologists here? Oh, loads. Right. Oh, 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 awesome. awesome. Well, we have a club. We have a club. Yeah. 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 No one yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah. There's three of yeah. uh, you. I hope you will probably agree with me, but it is one of the smelliest yeah. operations. <laughs> you brew up these evil brews to grow these bugs in. Uh, and I discovered very quickly after about six months that I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> and so I, I did something else. Uh, something that I, I actually did, didn't particularly want to do. Uh, but it paid a lot of money. Um, so if I... Did you say Hitler? You know this boy too well. Now, I, I think if, if I could put it, I always wanted to be a cricketer. I love cricket. If I could play for England, uh, cricket, that would have been it. A cricketer? Yeah. So what, what stops you? Just lack of talent. <laughs> I had that of being the football captain. It's one of my classic plans that worked really well up until I put it into action. It's a bummer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Um, well, I, I was a teacher by profession, um, but I always fancied sort of being a sunbed tester, you know. <laughs> so, a pool somewhere, you know. That'd be quite, um, no, I, I would probably be a teacher still. and. Um, yeah, it, it's a noble profession, and I, I was saying to Sue at dinner, you know, the, the, most days you, you would, you know, you would go home thinking, yeah, you've had a tough time, so you probably made a difference in someone's life. So. Much like Swanee yeah. teaching. <laughs> Almost identical. <laughs> but, um, and, 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 and I think that's a bit of a, a, a re or something that, that kind of motivated me to write books for children, really, you know, and, and I still go into schools now, and I do writing workshops, and promote literacy and reading and things like that, so, uh, yeah. so yeah, it's still kind of a bit of a beam upon it about that really, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've lost number six in our question from the Dirty Dozen, so give me a number from the middle here. What do you want, one to twelve? Eight. Number eight. Okay, and who do you want to ask? Sue. Sue. <laughs> There's a theme oh, about it. You managed to choose a delightful question for Sue. No pressure. Do you ever leap out of bed and start writing before having a wash? Yeah. I have. I have. Well, I I don't do the much leaping out of bed so much as opening the drawer, getting the pad out, and so that's before I've done anything. Middle of the night, before I go to sleep, any time really. It's interesting when the inspiration grabs. You have to. Yeah. You have to do it. Do, do you all have that, or is that just? Yeah. 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 So that was a tame question, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Any other two? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, as we all, I think, did when we got our book, we were doing other things. We had, we had other jobs. Yeah. No, I was, I was writing short stories. So. 
My love is like a red, red rose. Uh, and she said, did you write that? I said, <laughs> yes. 
So what was the biggest lie of your writing life? <laughs> John. Oh. Um, um, I don't know. I'm quite an honest sort of person. Um, <laughs> cool. And I, I, what, one of the things when you go into schools, that one of the things that they always ask you is, you know, have you met Roald Dahl? You know, <laughs> and you have to say, no, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they always want to know if you've worked with famous, uh, famous authors. And, I mean, they always ask you if you're famous as well. It sort of answers itself. Uh, yeah. Well, it does. Uh, yeah, 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 you think so, but you really, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, do you know who I am? No. Well. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I've been very lucky actually. Um, at the, at the last book that I wrote, which was. Um, for Oxford University Press, which is a, a, it's a part of a reading scheme book, uh, reading scheme actually. But um, but the, the um, kind of I don't know what you call him really, like executive editor of this series, which is called Greater Stories, is Michael Moore Perkins. And uh, I've, I've, I've sat in the same room as <laughs> last year, and um, yeah, and, and apparently he's looked. At the story, you know. So I, I guess my, my kind of literary lie probably goes as far as you know, sort of telling children that I'm currently working on a project with Michael Moore. <laughs> <laughs> so technically true. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do kids just say, "Do you know uh, uh, any famous authors?" And it is, it's like yeah. slap, you know. Yeah. And then they go it's through this. Kids. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Those other kids who were so blunt. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I had one school, it was, and you had the thing, you know, do you know Roald Dahl? No, he's dead. Um, do you know J.K. Rowling? No, she lives in a castle in Scotland. Um, and then one lad, lad put his out, he said, do you know John Mayhew? <laughs> <laughs> totally! How insulting is that? <laughs> That is true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was utterly annoying. I can't tell you how annoying it was. When I went over, I gave him a shirt. Just as an addendum to that, no one has ever asked me. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry. I was technically known as 15 Love, I think. <laughs> I knocked that one back really well. Yeah. So let's move swiftly on. Sue, <laughs> uh, a question for you. If you could go back to the start of your writing career again, what would you do differently? What one thing? Uh, I would pursue some opportunities that I didn't realise were opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a couple of times agents contact me and say stuff like, oh, I see you're doing a Formula One column and you think you're doing a Formula One book. And I went, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Penny didn't. Well, I just thought they were being nice because I'd met them at a conference or something. And, and uh, yeah, when I was going to York Festival once, um, Karen Blake said to me on Twitter, um, Ben Munson's going to be there, why don't you pop in and say hello? And I thought, he doesn't even know me, I'm like friends with him on Twitter. And then years later, when I did apply to Carol Blake and she introduced me to my current agent in Blake Friedman, one of Carol's authors said to me, you've been on Carol's radar for years and you didn't, you didn't respond to any of her hints. Oh. Oh. Stupid can you get? No, but don't you think, why didn't you tell me? It would be much easier, Well, you see, that's, that's against the ethos, isn't it, to yeah. actually try and... Yeah. I, th I don't think they realise, uh, it's something you... I talk to authors a lot, and we all seem to share this massive insecurity, don't we? Yeah. This, you know. What insecurity? <laughs> <laughs> most, most authors share this insecurity. Yeah. No, we, we all expect, you know, to get caught out somehow, you know, and then we get the call and say, can we have that advance pack with yeah. really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And it's true, though, isn't it? It's yeah, true. yeah, yeah, yeah. You always, you, and, and that's why I think you often do miss these opportunities because they, oh, they can't possibly mean me. Yeah. Um, it's true. It's not being, it's not false modesty. It's, it's some kind of inner sort of um, inner critic. Yeah, inner critic. Inner critic. Yeah. So what would you do differently in your writing career? <coughs> oh crap! Um, at the start of my writing career, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know, at the, the the titles of my um, Danny Baker books. I hate for really, really tell I can't tell you how much I hate. Were they your choices? No. And that's the thing. No, no, they weren't. Uh, and I wish I'd fought harder. Um, if you the, 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 the 
publishing is very marketing driven, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's totally marketing driven. Um, and it's if marketing, yeah, they, they pat you on the head and they say, there, there, you just go and write the stories and we know what we're doing, we know best. You know? And they came with these horrible titles like The World That He's a Bogey. And... <laughs> 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 yeah, and which suggested dozens of alternatives and they just went, eh, you know, we know best. I've been banned from three schools because of those titles. Oh. Seriously? How oh. rock and roll is that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, move over Mick Jagger. I've been banned from primary school. Yes. No, seriously. And you know what it is? It's the F word. Fart. <laughs> it is the most heinous, Egregious word that you could ever utter in a primary school. Yeah, no, seriously. So yeah, I wish I'd really, really, really good buddy and said no, you know. But it's only contract. Yeah. And when you, you know, you're a new author and it's you think, oh, I'd take it away. Yeah. I had exactly the same thing on my third book. It's based on a place on Dartmoor called Evil Coom, and it was meticulously researched. I went and spent a couple of nights up there to see how the light changes and the sound changes. And it's, a, it's so the book is with the publishers, and they're taking it to W. H. Smith to try and get a, a place in W. H. Smiths, and um, and the managing director phones me and says, Look, "Good news and bad news." Oh, so great, they love the characters, they love the plot, they love the story. So what's the bad news? They hate the title. They think the title is too soft and fluffy. Oh, so I said, "Well, I'm I'm not changing. It's a real place. It's meticulous. I'm not changing." Said, well, we we'll kiss goodbye to ten thousand cents. So, I'm not changing. That's fine. <laughs> Change this to this, and I go, which is going to sell most? Mm -hmm. They say this, I'm like, well, You do sometimes have to accept they know more about that yeah, part yeah, than yeah. you. No, no, I'm perfectly happy about it. Yeah. Although they've yeah. never wanted armpit fart in any of my times. <laughs> 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 There's always room for growth, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we can just remember we've got an audience to present, if that's all right. It's my little present to you, Sue. Okay. Uh, shall we have another of the dirty dozen on that subject? Um, over here, give us another one. Three, number nine. Oh, oh, yeah, not, oh, yes. yes. Yeah. I don't necessarily have to. The <laughs> <laughs> people want to know. <laughs> I think the audience would like to know the I answer. believe they would. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See what you get me into there? Yeah, this no, is fairly um, good. Yeah, yeah, no. No, uh, no pressure. No pressure. No, the, the one, the, the, similar to yours actually, is titles. And, and my um, second series that I did for Bloomsbury was called... Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a young Captain Nemo, basically. So it's set in a Vernian world. And I wanted to call it the Nautilus Chronicles. For some reason... If you talk to agents, publishers, they go, oh no, you, just, you can't call anything Chronicles. Go, oh no, we don't use the word Chronicles. Why is that? But I, but I don't know whether it's because of the Chronicles of Narnia or whatever, but and my editor said, uh, no, 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 we can't use the word Chronicles, it's far too erudite. <laughs> <laughs> so I went away and looked that up in the dictionary. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and apparently it means clever. So. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and so they called it Monster Odyssey. Didn't Odyssey, which is meant to be a, a kind of step up from Beast Quest, and um, yeah, a, a little bit of me died that day, really. But, um, but again, you know, you, you're you're kind of led by the nose a little bit, and, and certainly by the, the bank account. You know? um, so yes, there you go. Right, um, a number from over here for the dirty dozen. Nine. Three. 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 Okay, three. And who do you want to ask it to? Steve. <laughs> well, let's give Sue a break, shall we, for this? So you get this one. You'll like, you'll like this question. Have you ever fancied a fictional character? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong with that? <laughs> you know, I, I confessed this last night. But I, unfortunately, no, no, no characters in books can ever get further than 
um, than Doris Day in Buckskin, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have applause! <laughs> we have a fan. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> we'll set up a club. Yeah. No, um, no I, I, you know, the strangest thing is, has anyone ever read Enchanted April? Yeah. Elizabeth yeah. von Arman, yeah, it's a wonderful yeah. book, it's a beautiful yeah. book. And there's a character in that who's rather dippy and sort of a bit of a, a, a hippie and she's weird and she sort of senses things. She's called Lottie. And I always fancied Lottie actually, I thought she was lovely. She's married though, Lottie. I don't care. She, <laughs> <laughs> she made her daughter husband. Lancadian man, Mr. Well, she's only human, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> What appealed to you about her? I, I don't know. She had this wonderful. I don't know. She she was open and, and generous yeah. and charming. She's a wonderful character. Yeah. You have got a heart. Actually, I, 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 I had this wonderful uh, illustrator for my Danny Baker books called Kate Pankhurst, the original. She's fabulous. And there was a character in it called um, Senora uh, Juanita Delgado, <laughs> who's the uh, the mayoress of uh, Morisco, which means seafood in Spanish. Um, and she did this drawing of, of, of Juanita, and I fell for Juanita. <laughs> I remember writing to my editor and saying, I really fancy Juanita. Is this wrong? <laughs> you know, I, I fancy a line drawing. It's a bit odd. <laughs> but I did. Mild deal, Steve, but that's right. we're, we're all friends here. Yeah? I'm okay. <laughs> Sue, what about you? Ever fancied a fictional character? Yeah, I, um, the first adult book. When I say adult, I mean... <laughs> 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 My dad read it, you know, it wasn't Dr. Doolittle or anything. Was, I read when I was nine, and it was um, A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. Mm -hmm. And I also fell in love with my first romantic hero, who was Joe Harmon. And you can't get much more heroic than this. We're going to talk about romantic we're heroes. Right? He was actually crucified because he yeah. wouldn't tell... Um, give, give the information to uh, the commandant, the Japanese, it wouldn't be a commandant, it was Japanese, but the equivalent of this prisoner of war camp. And so he was crucified and flogged um, for his crime. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't say where these chickens had gone. They'd give, he'd given this guy's chickens to, the, to the, these women um, prisoners. And um, so in the morning he was still alive and he wasn't, he, was, he wasn't supposed to be, he was meant to be dead. So this captain came up and said, well, I feel, you know, to, to satisfy Japanese honour, I need to offer you a boon now. What do you want? He said, one of your effing chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, yes, that man's for me. Yeah. Wow, what a powerful scene. Amazing how a scene like that can make such an impression on I have read it probably 60 times since, but yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And Joel, what about you? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, from that, going back to, it, um, yeah, I mean, you, you falling for a line drawing is weird. But <laughs> I had to go a step further, and, and, and my, one of my first literary crushes was uh, was the Snork Maiden in the movie. Um. <laughs> 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 yeah, so
to join us. Okay, it has been great fun. Best thing I've ever done. Yeah. Everything, really. What do you think about what we do? We make things up, yeah. write it down, and people pay us for it. No one told me about jobs like that when I was at school. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sue? Um, when, I was a, when I first started writing and getting published in weekly magazines, I was a stay-at-home mum, uh, apart from I worked in the evening in, in sort of like typesetters and motorcycle news and stuff, where you were quite low in the pecking order, you just came in for four hours in the evening and went home again. Um, and it gave me back, it gave me a sense of identity, but it made me smarter than some of the smart asses who had been looking down their nose at me while I was a stay-home mum. That's big stuff, yes. so empowering. I think, yeah, it is empowering. I think it's the best job in the world. I feel privileged to be a writer. I feel privileged to be a writer in the time of social media so that people will just come on to you just to say, like your book. Mm. And I've been lucky not, I mean you get your crap Amazon reviews, the people who say I'm giving it one star so I didn't like the prologue, and there is no flame in the prologue. <laughs> 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 Did you actually point that out? Or just I, I, no, I didn't, I let it go. But just, just the thing that people who don't know you, but you've touched them just by entertaining them for a few hours, will bother to come on Facebook and say, I read that on the way back from Italy or whatever, loved it. And that, I think that's fantastic. <coughs> yeah. It does mean a lot. What about you, Jim? Yeah, um, similar to Steve in lots of ways. I, 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 I'm not sure if it's changed me as a person, but, um, but so I'm very conscious of, of, of the, the sort of privileges that I've had and the opportunities that have opened up as well. So, you know, you, uh, February, I went on like the, the weirdest school visit ever into Sao Paulo in Brazil, which is like so bizarre, you know, um, talking about the books. And, and it is great when. when Children contact you and mm. ask you questions about the characters and <coughs> and, and yeah, I, I was saying to Sue at lunch actually or at dinner. Um, you know, sometimes people say, "Oh, I really love such and such a book." You know, loved your book, and, and there's a little bit of me that's still like, oh, I, "I don't believe that." <laughs> you know, that, that can't be right. Yeah. yeah. Insecurity thing, yeah. yeah, it is that inner critic, and that doesn't kind of go away really. So, in that respect, um, it hasn't changed me. Um, but I do feel like really proud and, and uh, yeah, very privileged as well. <coughs> Especially as I wasn't a natural um, reader, you know, if you met me at nine, and, uh, you know, I, I read comics and, and I wasn't a, a, a great sort of uh, devourer of books until <coughs> sort of mid teens, probably. So I wasn't like a natural fit for a, a writer of any description. Really. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, you so told me at dinner it was 19, not 9, when you were still reading. <laughs> 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 a couple of months ago, um, it, it, it doesn't happen often, but I was in the local Mark Suspensers and I was looking at whatever it was, you know, the pastor of me, and um, I heard, that's Steve Hartley. Wow. And when an eight-year-old starts shouting that in the middle of Marks and Spencer's, you begin to think, oh shit. It's not so well, is it? Not necessarily what you want the kids to shout at you in the middle of Marks and Spencer's. Yeah. It's him! Yeah. <laughs> Officer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, let, let, let's have another one of the dirty dozen. Let's have a number one. Yeah. Number one, all right? And who do you want to ask? Sue. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sue. What question do you get asked about being a writer which most annoys you? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I hope nobody in this room's done this. It's <laughs> really oh, well. It always comes on an email, it usually comes via your website. And it has an entire manuscript attached to it. And they say, please, will you read this and let me see, tell me what you think. An entire manuscript? Yeah. And how do you answer this diplomatically? Well, when I had an appraisal, sort of a, I, did a, I had a, a page on my website where I would do appraisals and charge people, you know, for it. Um, and it was deadly, don't do it. It's, it just takes so much time. You, you, you're earning like a pound an hour or something. But, um, so then I used to go back and say, yeah, that'd be £650. <laughs> and then they say yes. Yeah, but now, unless it's somebody I've absolutely met, and 
member meeting, then I just don't answer that one, I'm afraid. I just let that sink to the bottom of the inbox and let them think about whether that was a very fair thing to do. Um, but if it is somebody I've met, I just say, I hope nobody's done <laughs> so, My publisher won't let me do that in case you accuse me of plagiarism later. <laughs> I'm sure you can understand the situation. If, if we were writing something the same, you could imagine what would happen. Very and they could watch our Very good. That's <laughs> very good. What about you, John? Um, yeah, I, I don't. In, in terms of questions when, when there's a, an, an audience, you know, I, I don't really. There aren't many questions that. that Annoy me, or you know, I, I know, I know a lot of authors, uh, children's authors especially, will grumble about the where do you get your ideas yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I, I never mind that. No, I don't yeah. mind that either because I think it's a legitimate question, yeah. especially you know, when you group the children and, and they're constantly being asked to come up with ideas and stories, I think well, fair enough. Um, well, the one question that always sort of makes my heart sink, and it's usually my own family that kind of do it, extended <laughs> family. And, and you stood there at a party or something, and it's again, it's a perfectly legitimate question. But it's you know, you stood there with the pint, and that your brother-in-law's cousin or something shuffles up and goes, "All right, John," and you're like, "All right, Brown." You know, so, so, how's the writing going? <laughs> <laughs> and then I feel a bit like Gandalf at the beginning of the Hobbit, or you know, when, he, when he's wished good morning, and he says, "What do you mean?" Morning to be good on, or it's a good yeah. morning. Or, you know. And, and you know, I feel like saying, What do you mean, how's the writing? It's like, How is the physical act of writing going? So, are my fingers okay? And I think there's no words on the page. Or are you asking me about sales? In which case, I'll have to go to my sort of statements and, and the royalty. You know, and I just, and then I end up going, Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> it's just one of the most wearisome. No, I'd rather say, they come up and say, where do you get your ideas from? <laughs> Sometimes it's the tone of voice as well, isn't it? They still go, they go, are you still doing your writing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you still doing your writing? Are you still doing your writing? Are you still doing your writing? Are you still doing your Are you seen as weird because of what you do? Uh, I was seen as weird well before. I was very surprised. And, um, Steve, what question most of No, I'm, I'm sure John's had it. There's a children's author. You do get, you know, when are you going to write an animal book? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost like, you know, writing for children is somehow practice. <laughs> no, seriously. And I did have what somebody once uh, said to me, how would you manage to dumb down to write children's books? <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I pulled the knife out of his chest. <laughs> I answered it. <laughs> no, it seriously, it's something that children's authors suffer from, I'm afraid. We, we, it's the, uh, you know, the, the, it's like the poor relation of publishing. We, you know, we're not proper writers driven. Mm. Oh, yeah, right that's right. in popular fiction as well. Yeah, I bet you do. They're going to say, yeah. when, when are you going to write something to make me think? <laughs> so have you read any of my books? There's yeah. cancer, head injury, you know, neurological damage. Have you read any of them? They're going, no. John, a question for you. Uh, what piece of writing advice do you often give out but rarely follow? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's probably, I, I do often say, oh, you know, you should write every day. <laughs> and, then, and then don't myself. Yeah. Or, or, um, yeah, oh, the other one is, is uh, now, and it was something that I, I kind of, I do occasionally rediscover that, you know, when people say, oh, well, I'd love to write, but I haven't got the time, you know, oh. well, you, yeah, you kind of make time, don't you, you know, but then I just spend my life on Facebook and Twitter, <laughs> yeah. so, I've got time to write, so, yeah, it's probably those two, really. Sue? Uh, I really, I, I've been trying to think of something, I think because I, every book seems to be written differently, each one I write, I mean, um, that I probably just randomly try everything sooner or later. But this book I'm writing now, which has just gone over 100,000 words, so I'm really hoping I'm near the end now, um, is the first one I've written in bits and pieces. Um, I'm very fond of saying to people, and I, I said it to somebody who I had a one-to-one -one with this afternoon, 
I don't think it's any coincidence that the first book I planned is the first one that I got an offer on. And so having told people this, and you know, you don't have to plan in detail, just maybe think about the focus of the book and the, the major conflicts. What I did was get this scene in my head, write it down, then I wrote another one, then I, wrote, then I had 14,000 words, I thought, well, hey, I'm going to carry on. You know, I've got a deadline, I don't have time to plan. So, yeah, a little bit of this one, I'm just hoping it's going to be okay. Steve? Yeah, they the write every day, John, definitely. Yeah. I'd say that in schools, I'll go, what do you, how do you write? I say, I write every day, I feel my nose hitting. <laughs> 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 yeah, I do agree with that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the thing that I've it's, I guess it's the rewrite, rewrite, and rewrite, and rewrite, you know, which, because uh, I'm, oh, I'm the laziest writer in the world. I, I, I'm too easily, I know I'm too easily satisfied with what I've written. Um, I could always just, you know, but I just can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other thing I, 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 I always tell people to do is, is to, to look for repetition, to look for words that you, you use a lot, and I don't know because my, my wife edits all my early drafts. Um, and it always oh, comes about proper lies, no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not. It always comes about with the words several in rings. Because it is one of those we all do it. We all have a word that we overuse, don't we? And mine is several. It's a horrible word. It really it's like suddenly. You know, it's like, like suddenly. You suddenly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's mine is several. Um, I remember reading um, a published book by uh, Sarah Grant, who's John and I both know um, she writes YA fiction, and her first novel, I read it, it's, it's really good. But the word scoot kept jumping out of the Because she's American. And so people were scooting down the corridor, scooting out of the room. And then she used it about half a dozen times. And it's such an unusual word that it's sort of leapt off the page, you know? And we all do it, we all do it. But, uh, and, you know, I, that's a, a direct result of not really rereading and really nitpicking it. But, but I, I, I love that. One of my favourite books uh, is The Black Book of Secrets by F.P. Higgins. And uh, there's, a, there's a whole series of those books. And in one of them, the phrase is used, his breath came out in short pants. <laughs> <laughs> out of the story. <laughs> famous and celebrated book do you actually dislike immensely? Oh. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. Where do you want to start? <laughs> yeah, I once read a brilliant um, uh, what's the word? A definition of, of, of the word classic novel, uh, the phrase classic novel. It's and it was let's never remember it. It was um, a book that we all know that we ought to read, but no one ever has. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, Charles Dickens just oh, fits oh, right in. Oh, you are good at this book, because we'll get hit on it soon. John Scalding, you're oh, a fan. Oh, you're yeah. a fan, Charles. Yeah, I'm a scale. fan. Too. I, I think it stems to the fact that I was forced to read The Great Expectations when I was 16. Oh, you know, oh, my favourite book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm afraid it's one of my favourites as well. That's it. 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 Yeah, you, I bet everyone in this room can remember the book that they had to read to do their O levels or GCSEs. Yeah. 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 Great expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to do great expectations for O levels. I ended up doing it for A levels by some weird chance, and then I ended up doing it from a degree as well. So um, you knew by then, I, yeah, I love that book. <laughs> there is that as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, John, what, what, what famous oh, book do you Yeah, this might alienate certain members of the, the, uh, the, the, the audience, but um, I, I tried to read Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and, uh, and uh, uh, Neil Gaiman, and it's, um, people say, oh, you want to read Good Omens, it's fantastic, hilariously funny, and 
I kind of got halfway through it and just thought, this is just the same joke being repeated <coughs> again. So it wasn't for me. Maybe I should read it again um, before it comes out on what's it on Netflix or something. It's going to come out, isn't it? With David Tennant and someone else who's good looking and clever. So, you know, never going to be going again. Oh, you must read the it's, it's a hilarious book. Oh, you like yeah. But I'm terrible anyway because I am a little bit oppositional. So if. Um, if somebody says, oh, you must read this book, I immediately read yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I've never been a kind of joiner in, in a way, and uh, that, that makes it a bit difficult sometimes. So, yeah, so, sorry, Terry and Neil, but okay. it's good there. And Sue, so, what one did you dislike? Well, anything by Dickens, I'm sorry. Um, oh. Oh. Well, I've got to say, I've never read more than two chapters of any, because I just hate them so much. But I don't like very much um, stuff that was write, written a couple of hundred years ago. It's it's so slow. I like yeah. stuff that's written now, and it's accessible. I don't have to, you know, look for the symbolism and everything. I just enjoy the bloody story, and that's all I want in my book. <laughs> No, you see, it's not only, I, I love Jane Austen, but I can't Oh, yeah, I can't, yeah. I'm sure I'm actually. Well, um, the time has zipped away from us, so I've got one final question um, for you this evening. We all know that writing has good days and bad days, when you have struggles and rejections and times when the words don't come. So why do you and why should we all keep on writing? What does it mean? Can I start that with... Nobody looks like they want to answer that. <laughs> so, so Steve. Oh, <laughs> Anybody want to save Steve? Yeah, please. The mine is good. No, you're not really. Thanks, <laughs> John. Thanks, John. He's watching you scream. He's been slaying. <laughs> He's been slaying. <laughs> what what can you repeat? Yes. Writing has good days and bad days, and some days we struggle, and some days we despair. We all do it. We're writers. Why do we carry on? Why should we carry on? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... <laughs> Thank you very much. I think it's because we've all got, we've all got stories inside us and, and the sort of first things to get out or characters that keep pecking away at our brains and they want their voices heard and um, and at the end of the day, yes, yeah, some days that it isn't great writing. Some, you know, some days it is quite hard to write. But actually, it's it's not unlike when you were a child and and you played. Yeah. You know, it is yeah. it's play. You know, and and for me, if it if it if it ever became a day job, I'd go and get a day job. You know, it, it, I, I I enjoy writing and it's play for me. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult, but you know, essentially. You, you're, you're imagining things, you're putting imaginary characters in imaginary situations and seeing what they do. And, uh, and that's good fun. It's yeah. good fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's not an answer. Oh, you got an answer? <laughs> yeah. well, I'm sorry, we just finished with yeah. <laughs> Should we let him answer? Yeah. yeah. You're too soft. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's Go on, let's It's just such good fun, isn't it? It's just. Just play. Like that. Just play. Sorry. What you said. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's better than a proper job. That's exactly what I was going to say. It is, it is my proper job. I, yeah, it is yeah. my day job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've um, been really fortunate in the last couple of years to have got a big uh, contract with a bigger publisher, and I don't have to, I don't have to teach anymore. <coughs> this is pretty much my swan song. And um, somebody, my swanic song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody emailed me a couple of days ago. They'd actually been in the Outer Hebrides for four weeks. I know people say, "Oh, it sounds like they've been in the Outer Hebrides." But they don't know so and so, but they had. And she'd come home and she'd seen an um, announcement that I'd signed this new three-book deal. And she said, "Congratulations, you're living your dream." And I felt like emailing her back and saying, actually, thank you for saying that, because just this afternoon I thought, if they don't just shut up and leave me alone to write this book, you know, why do they need this? Why do they need that? And I thought, no, actually, it's me who should shut up. I've worked since 1991 to get here. I was 21 years to be an overnight success, if you like. And uh, I worked for five years just to get published in a, in a magazine. So I'm going to enjoy it now. Well, it's a lovely note to end on.
ending in the slightest, I can promise you, but that was a beautiful note to end on. So ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you would just once more, uh, thanks for the panel, Sue, John and Steve. Thank you.